Hey everyone, I thought I would do kind of um, on my desk, a little bit chatty, a little bit showing you a few things um, video. So forgive me if this is kind of all over the place. But I just wanted to show you, so this is my current sketchbook. It's a Cuddy sketchbook. I absolutely love it. It's 20 centimeters on 25, I think the size is, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, it has a hard cover and it has this really lovely kind of beige type of cover, which I really prefer to the black um, Stillman and Burn one that they have for their hardcover journals. And this is the rough paper. And I think you can already see the texture of this. And I absolutely love it. I will do a flip through when I'm done with it. I have probably will take me another week or two weeks to finish it. So this has been kind of a play with watercolors. Like I got some new watercolors as I was working on this journal. So that's in there, sketch my life type of thing, which I'm really, really enjoying right now. And yesterday I was working, this is a photo that a good friend of mine took in, I want to say Mallorca. I think they were in Mallorca. Um, and she took this photo and basically what I want to do, what I hope to do, is to um, create kind of a series of watercolor painting sketches uh, with some of her photos and give it to her as a housewarming present. They have a new apartment and that's what I really want to do. But I don't know <laughs> if, <laughs> if I can make something that I feel, you know, proud enough to give as a present. Anyway. Um, I'm sure she would be like very very happy with whatever I make but she has like the she's one of the more stylish people that I know so I kind of want to get it like really really good um, so yeah I was playing a lot with color I was also reading um, one of Jean Haynes's books I will leave links to everything that I can remember to leave links so just showing you um, you know there are all kinds of like interesting colors in this photo and um, I don't necessarily feel the need to stay true to these colors. Um, so I was just playing around and I have here some paper samples. So this is, for example, you can see it's, it says Milford. Um, you can get from Jackson's Art Supplies all kinds of trial packs of different papers and usually they cost like between half a euro or or half a pound to a pound and a half and you get several sheets of water of watercolor paper um i think i'll show you an example so this is from buckingford milford i think there are uk based uh, manufacturer and you can see that's how it comes that's a trial pack and you get here um, like seven sheets I think uh, so these are really really worth trying before you commit to a whole pack and that's what I was using there's also I got this one um, this is Jackson's handmade at two rivers so I guess they collaborated um, and made their house brand um, yeah, so this one says though cotton linen gelatin tub size. So I'm thinking gelatin as far as I'm aware is made from animal bones. Um, so I should probably check that because I do, I've said it before, I'm trying to buy vegan things, but it always amazes me how animal products are in everything. So I need to check that, but, um, Jackson's Jackson's have like really good stuff made under their name uh, like brushes and watercolors those are the things that I've tried they're really good and the price is usually um, a good price point because it's their in-house brand anyway so I was playing with all kinds of colors this was kind of I'm trying to search for end of summer autumn palette and this was playing with some of the neutral colors in my palette, um, which I absolutely love. These are some of the Daniel Smith paints here, uh, which I thought would be perfect for rocks because they have this interesting granulation. Love these. 
So just playing around and you can see I'm just trying to find a color scheme that speaks to me and just playing with colors. And then I thought, okay, I'll do a quick sketch in my journal to kind of, I'm trying to do the sketch my life type of thing. So this was my day today in my studio and I thought it would be fun to add it. So I really did a quick sketch of, you know, this without, this was just like one layer, no fuss. I didn't really get back to it. I just wanted to create a fast impression and I, I kind of like it. I like the very um, sketchy and very not overworked. That's always, I, I don't like it when things look overworked. So, and I was also playing with some of the, this is the dot card from Daniel Smith. I don't know, I feel like I want to add a few colors to my collection and I'll tell you what's really really calling my name so there's the perline maroon look at that color which is just beautiful uh, a lot of these i have like the ones that i really really like i already have in my collection the interesting ones that uh, are here are i'll just tell you the names because those are really my favorite there's the hematite violet genuine that's this one um, you can see just a beautiful, such an interesting color. These are like my type of neutrals. I really don't go for brown neutrals. And then another one that is really interesting. Where are you? I will find you. The Hematite Burnt Scarlet. That's also, I think that one is a good match for my rocks there. It has a little bit of warmth. It's a little bit warmer than this one, the hematite violet, hematite. Um, yeah, and it's it's beautiful. They're both like really, really granulating. So I'm not sure which one to get. I'm thinking about maybe the burnt tiger's eye. I don't know. I also like the garnet genuine. That kind of makes me um, want to get it for autumn. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know. If you have any favorites here, then let me know. So... That's what I was playing with yesterday and today I thought I will just uh, play around with some of the blues that I was playing with yesterday and we can um, talk about it. So maybe I'll just fill out the names first so I don't forget and mess everything up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I filled out some of the colors that I'm going to um, swatch here. And this palette, if you're not familiar, this is the Robux palette and it comes on a lazy... Uh, Susan you can see the turning thing and um, it's fantastic and it has like different inserts so this one has more colors because I didn't have enough colors which I know it's insane um, I've had this now for two years and I've really enjoyed it but I'm thinking that now that I'm a little bit more focused on my colors I'm thinking I will get, they have another one which has just bigger um, wells. So less colors, bigger wells. I think that's where I go because I see now that many times I feel like, you know, just like rubbing with my brush in those little uh, pans. I'm not sure it's right for my type of painting which has a lot of like washes and I sometimes use big brushes. I think if you do more detail work, um, I saw this palette first uh, with, uh, on Daniel Donaldson's uh, Instagram or course, I can't remember. And she does a lot of like small scale sketches or illustrations with a lot of details. So I think for her, um, the pan size here or the well size is great. Um, you can also buy these wells from... Robux, which I think is fantastic because then you can just switch them around uh, if you want to change your colors. So I think maybe I will buy uh, a different setup. And yeah, most days I use my custom palette in this tin and then I have a small one for my neutrals. Um, just because also on my main work desk, I don't have really room to keep this always here. So this is on my other desk. Anyway, not important. Okay, let's 
get into the colors. So the first one I'm gonna try here is the, I probably am butchering the name, in Denthron Blue, I wanna say, which is this really kind of deep, inky blue. And I'll also put the photo here so you can kind of see. And I think maybe this is a good choice for some of the darker areas here. And it's a really beautiful color. Then I have Ultramarine from Core. And the thing is, if you use Core with other uh, companies, the Core paint usually just pushes the other colors completely aside. Uh, if you only use Core, I think then the colors are, you know, they're not really competing with each other. But with other brands, um, it'll just really push them aside so that's fun but then also sometimes it takes over a bit too much um, here let's do cobalt blue from M Graham M Graham has beautiful beautiful paints they have honey in them um, so they're not vegan but I have some tubes probably won't repurchase uh, Daniel Smith and Core are vegan, if I'm not mistaken. So that's good news. Although the core with Core, the single tubes are really pricey, and Daniel Smith also depending on the um, on the pigment and the series. So I do love the M Graham paints, and I have their. I I bought the package of their cobalt colors. I think it was, and they're beautiful. Nothing. Nothing I can say about them. Okay, the next one that I think might get into this painting is the Schmincke Indigo. And Schmincke's Indigo is my favorite, favorite indigo from all the ones that I've tried. I've tried several brands. And it is like a really deep blue. Um, I think they make it from two blue pigments and a lot of other brands put black in their indigo so this one to me feels really really alive and like very deep and interesting and not flat at all let's zoom in a bit so you can get a better look okay that's better so that's indigo and I think it would be really a good choice maybe also for these areas here maybe here in the photo I'm not sure next we have royal blue now this is an interesting color I'm not sure I'm gonna use it in this particular sketch this is actually a opaque color from Sennelier and it looks really like really interesting in the pan it's this one here so it looks kind of opaque and um, I really like it I think it's a beautiful it's it's a little bit I think I don't know what mixture is in it but it looks like something like cobalt blue or ultramarine blue with white and I like to use it lightly and then it still stays transparent uh, I don't know I don't think I will use it for this one Cobalt teal, I definitely want to add some splashes of teal to this. And I have here in this palette um, actually a few cobalt teals. <laughs> every, every cobalt teal I've tried from any brand, I usually love it. I haven't seen. Some are a little bit greener, a little bit bluer. Those are the differences, but they're all really beautiful. This one is M. Graham. Um, the Daniel Smith one is beautiful, the Core one is beautiful, Sennelier has one that's great, Schmincke of course, so you really can't go wrong with this color, it's PG50, that's the pigment. Uh, what do I have here? Um, Cerulean Blue, raise your hand if you watch The Devil Wears Prada, and that's how you know this color exists. Um, that's what I did. So this one is the Daniel Smith one, and it's a lovely color and I'm thinking maybe it will be a good choice here also because it's a little bit has a bit of that turquoise side to it I don't know you know it's a little bit more yellowish than all of these 
um, so the light genuine is one of my favorite favorite neutrals to use it's a Daniel Smith color it's one of their you know permatech colors from real minerals and stones and it's kind of well you can see it's like a gray like a cool gray and it granulates beautifully and I love it I love that color what else Oh, so there's the neutral that I was talking about. That's the Hematite Burnt Scarlet. I have it somewhere here in my palette. And I think that would be a good choice for the rocks. I used it here a little bit. So to bring some warmth to them. And it's just a beautiful color. It is kind of brownish. I said I didn't like that, but when you water it down, you really get this very soft beige color I would say with some gray granulation and I like how it mixes with the sodalite genuine I really like that that combo so this is those two with a splash of turquoise because I think here you can see also the kind of reflection I mean I see also blue shades and turquoises here in the rocks so I definitely want to add that. And here I didn't know what to put, so what can I put there? Here in these guys. Let's pick something from my palette. I have this, this is Lunar Blue, I think. Uh, Daniel Smith has, is it Lunar Blue? Yeah. Daniel Smith has a few, they call it the Lunar Shades. Lunar Black, Lunar Blue, Lunar Violet, and they are very, very, very granulating. So I guess like the surface of the moon. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm talking <laughs> nonsense, but that's that's where I think this came from, but who knows. So this is the Lunar Blue. I got um, a, a half pan of it from an Etsy store that sells uh, Daniel Smith colors in half pans and yeah it's not it's not my favorite color it's very pretty it's just like a personal taste thing but i kind of like intense colors that's where i that's where i go and this is a little bit meh. and then there's moon glow maybe i should add that moon glow which i'm out of i have a few little nibbits of it in my palettes but i'm done with it uh, I'm not sure it's right for this painting, but come on, it's one of the best <laughs> colors. I think it's a little bit too purplish. I want to keep this painting very kind of a bit more warm. Well, I don't want the cool tones to be this cool, this purpley. I don't think I want purple there. I'm not sure, but it's a beautiful color, so I put there, put it in there. We can add some splatters. Let's add some turquoise splatters. So that's always fun so I don't mind if they get into the samples because that can also be helpful even though some of these are already dry but look I mean look how beautiful that is to me that's like magic so that's a really fun combo um, yeah anyway I think that's it so let me know if you enjoyed this video please <laughs> leave me a comment and tell me <laughs> if this was interesting and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.